Well, we're very lucky on It's Time to Talk tonight. Students from St Columbus School in Port Macquarie will be tackling a very real local issue, which has very real implications for us here in the Hastings, fluoridation. Tonight, St Columba will debate the topic, should fluoride be added to the Port Macquarie water supply? And it's a top school, so if you do stay tuned, I'm fairly sure you'll learn something, maybe... They'll even manage to change your mind. Now, this is, as I said, debate style. St Columba's Mr Mills is outside in the green room, ready to adjudicate. There is a two-minute time limit per speaker, and there is absolutely no punching below the belt. It's going to be a good, clean argument. Our first speaker for the negative is Nikita Alexander, who will be opening the argument against fluoridation in Port Macquarie. Nikita, welcome, and fire when ready. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nikita, and I am the first speaker for tonight. Laura is our second, and Lauren is our third. We are the negative team, and we believe Port Macquarie should not be fluoridated. Fluoridation is the dosing of a community's water supply with fluoride waste products from industry. Port Macquarie is about to be fluoridated. According to Murray Thompson, the Port Macquarie Hastings Water Supply Manager, the fluoridation chemical used will be hydrofluorosilicic acid, a hazardous waste byproduct of the phosphate fertiliser industry. If these same chemicals were dumped into a creek, the company would be charged with dumping hazardous waste. Yet injecting it into our drinking water at one part per million is not against the law. It should be. 95% of the world's population has rejected water fluoridation because it is unethical, ineffective, a waste of money and unsafe. It is unethical to medicate the population via their water supply. No ethical doctor would treat or medicate someone without knowing their medical history. They wouldn't say, here, have as much or as little as you like for the rest of your life. Water fluoridation is ineffective. After more than 50 years of fluoridation in Australia, there is a decay epidemic, according to the president of the Australian Dental Association, Neil Hewson. Tasmania, the first Australian state to be fluoridated, has the highest rate of toothlessness and tooth decay in Australia. Clearly, water fluoridation is not working. The Centers for Disease Control states that fluoride's actions are primarily topical. This means that it works from the outside in by applying it directly to the teeth, not swallowing it. You don't swallow sunscreen, do you? Water fluoridation is a waste of money. Less than 1% of treated water is actually consumed. The rest ends up in our gardens, down the drain and in our waterways. The Port Macquarie fluoridation plant will cost around two million of taxpayers' money to build and a minimum of $500,000 per year in ratepayers' money to run and maintain. And most importantly, water fluoridation is unsafe. Hydrofluorosilicic acid has never been proven safe for human consumption. It is contaminated with toxic metals such as arsenic, lead, mercury, as well as radioactive particles. Please keep it natural, keep it clean, and keep it out of Port Macquarie's water supply. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. Excellent and very well researched. Wow, I can tell you've done a lot of work there. Opening the case for adding fluoride is Lillian Hannock. How are you tonight, Lillian? I'm good, thank you. That's good, and thanks for coming out and doing all this work beforehand. Take it away when ready. Good evening, listeners and fellow debaters. Fluoride, there's nothing to hide. We reject the negative team's definition. Our definition is that water fluoridation is the controlled addition of fluoride to a public water supply to reduce tooth decay. Fluoridated water has a fluoride at a level that is effective for preventing cavities. This can occur naturally or by adding fluoride. I'm Lily, and as the first speaker, I'll be talking to you about water fluoridation throughout the world and economic benefits of water fluoridation. Our second speaker, Andrew, will be talking about the science and medical matters behind water fluoridation. Our third speaker, Floyd, will rebut and sum up our team case. In reply to the first speaker of the negative, 95% of the world's population rejected fluoride, according to whom, may I ask? Also, fluoride is the main active ingredient in the prevention of tooth decay, the real issue in the, around the world, including Port Macquarie. Also, fluoride is not a waste of money at all. According to studies conducted in Rapid River, USA, for every $1 spent in fluoridating water, it saves $38 in dental costs. Fluoridation costs an estimated $0.94 per person per year on the average. By comparison, fluoride toothpaste costs an esti- estimated $8 to $16 per person per year, with the incremental cost being zero for people who already brush their teeth for other reasons. At least 50 million people worldwide drink water that is naturally fluoridated to optimum levels. The actual number is unknown and is likely to be much higher. 
Fluoride has been present in the USA's water supply since 1950. Other countries, including Australia, have followed suit with support from the Australian Dental Association and Australian Medical Association. It's about time Port Macquarie caught up. Dental cavities remain a major public health concern in most industrialised countries, acting six, affecting 60 to 90% of school children and the vast majority of adults. Water fluoridation prevents cavities in both children and adults, with studies estimating an 18 to 40 percent reduction in cavities when water fluoridation is used by children who already have access to toothpaste and other sources of fluoride. I acknowledge that water fluoridation can cause dental fluorosis, but it is very rare, as you need 10,000 10, to 20,000 times more fluoride than you get in fluoridated water. There is no clear evidence of other adverse effects. So, listeners and fellow debaters, in conclusion, fluoride. There's nothing to hide. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Very convincing. Thank you very much. Laura Smith is speaker number two for the negative. Laura, welcome welcome to It's Time to Talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's great to have you in here. Now, you've got the floor, so take it away when you're ready. Good evening, listeners. As the second speaker for the negative team, I would like to begin by saying fluoride is a chemical byproduct of aluminium, steel, cement and phosphate. Is it, also, it is also used as rat poison. Is this really something we should be consuming? This isn't a one-size-fits-all society. We all have different medical needs, and it is fluoride in, one, in our water supply. There won't be another option. And why consume it anyway? Fluoride does its work topically rather than systematically. Therefore, by consuming fluoride in our water, we will not benefit from it. Fluoride is not an essential nutrient. No disease has ever been linked to a fluoride deficiency. The risks have been resulted from the consumption of fluoride. Fluoride also presents a risk to bones, leading to bone cancer and fractures, the thyroid gland which could potentially lead to depression and weight gain. Another risk that comes from the intake of fluoride is skeletal fluorosis. Skeletal fluorosis has symptoms which are associated with arthritis and fluoride makes bones brittle and more liable to fracture. In response to the statement that fluoride is the main acting ingredient in preventing tooth decay, um, we prove, it is proven that cavities do not increase when fluoridation stops. Fluoridation is not necessary. Most Western European countries are not fluoridated and have experienced the same decline in dental decay as the US. And the Times trends presented graphically, um, given reasons by countries or not fluoridating, are presented. Fluoridation's role in the decline of tooth decay is in serious doubt. There have been numerous recent reports of dental crises in the US cities which have been fluoridated for over 20 years. There appears to be far greater relationships between tooth decay and income level and than 15 seconds to go, water Laura. fluoride levels. This is why I conclude that we should keep it natural and keep it clean. Thank you very much, Laura. I know you, you stepped up to the plate at the last minute too, so an extra oh, yeah. special <laughs> thank you to you tonight. Good on you for coming on out. Um, Andrew Baker is speaker number two for the affirmative. Now, Andrew, you're ready to go. You're happy? Don't need yeah. a cup of tea or anything like that? Nope. No? Okay. Andrew, you've got the floor. Good evening, listeners, and Tim Bishop. We think that fl fluoride, there's nothing to hide. Now, however, what fluoride really is, is fluorine, which is on the table of elements, but missing an ion. So this does not contain any aluminium, arsenic, or lead, which are some of the things that the negative team said were in it. And also, the, as the speaker number two said for the other team, that there is bone cancer that may happen. You need 10,000 to 20,000 times more fluoride to cause these diseases. And also, in terms of drinking the water and whether you want to consume it or not, this is how it works. You drink the water that has the fluoride in it, which then goes into your saliva and then comes out in your mouth, which helps stop the um, tooth enamel from decaying. Also, in America, they have tested 170,000 x-rays and there was no fluorosis in any of the bones in this study. This was conducted in Michigan. And also, Professor Myers from the Harvard University 
has said that there are no cases of skeletal fluorosis in areas with artificially induced, introduced fluoride. And also, it's com the amount that's put in is completely safe. So, however, some people may think that it could cause problems. It is not going to cause problems further down the track because of the small amounts that are put in. And also, of course, the Australian Dentist Association and the AMA, the Australian Medical Association, both think it is a good idea and very good to put in the water supply. And so, fluoride. There's nothing to hide. Thank you. Andrew, fantastic. Thank you. Another very uh, 